So why is the harpist hand position so important? It's important for several reasons. One being that a consistent hand position can help us be more productive in our music, more efficient, and also more musical. There's a couple do's and don'ts for harpists when it comes to hand position. Number one, don't use the pinky. It's too short and too weak to really do us any good, but you can feel free to use the other four fingers, so thumb, index, third, and your ring finger in both hands. Um, some of the other do's are to curve your fingers all the way to the fingertip. We'll talk more about that later. And also, no random or jagged placing, and we'll talk about that later too in another step. How do you place your fingers on the harp? Very carefully. If you know anything about piano, we have this kind of a position, right? Any of you who've played piano feel like you have an apple under your fingers. Well, harp is very much the same way, except we just rotate that hand position. So instead of like this, we're gonna rotate and be like this, okay? So let me just do that for you so you can see. So uh, here's the piano position. Now I gotta place a C chord. I'm just rotating my hand and placing my fingers on the strings. You're gonna have a C shape here between your thumb and your second finger, if you can see that. And that just helps our thumb have more stability and a better volume when we're playing on the harp because it's going to have more motion in being down here. This is a better angle, so that's why we have the C position. When you place your fingers on the strings, you wanna make sure that when you're placing two, three, and four, they're all on the same level. Do you notice they're all about on the same level if I drew a line like this, they're all the same, versus something like that, okay? We want them all on the same level because it will help us have a nice even sound and it'll also help us have more stability in that we're not plucking at different angles and also compensating our tendons by causing tension because of that more jagged placing. Okay, so we're talking about curved knuckles here. I've got a good example here for you at the harp. When I'm talking about curved knuckles, what I mean is that each knuckle on the finger is being bent, not straight. Now, why we do that is several reasons. One is that our fingers in any joint, really, is stronger when it's curved. Think about when you go to pick up a pencil, we normally don't pick up a pencil flat like this. What do we do? We curve our fingers to pick it up. We have better fine motor skills and we have better strength and stability when our joints are curved. We're also going to get more articulated sound because we have more control. We have control all the way to the end of the fingertip instead of just to this knuckle here, the second knuckle. If I kept that flat, there are some techniques that do that. I teach Salzado, and so I teach differently. But some, some harpists do play like this, and that gives you a different sound. When you have a curved knuckle, you're going to get an articulated sound. It's going to be clean, it's going to be crisp, you're going to have more control, and it's just going to be better all around. When we go to place our fingers on the strings, I'm going to place two and one, two, and the thumb is one. Whatever fingers follow that, those fingers that have been placed, they need to act as one with that last one that was placed, so two in this instance. So when I go to play two, these ones are going to follow in. So they're acting in tandem with the two. The same thing happens with three, okay? So three is placed, but four and the pinky are not. Four and the pinky are going to hang out right next to it. So when the third plays, they're going to follow it in the same motion. The same thing with four. We don't ever pluck with our pinky, but it is going to act as one with the fourth. So when we pluck that fourth, the pinky comes in with it. We talked about placing here and the fingers working in tandem. The pinky, you need to watch out that the pinky, because it's not placing, 
it doesn't curl up. This is not time for high T. It needs to work in tandem with the fourth and stay relaxed. When you curl, you're just causing tension, which is what we don't want. So relax it and then pluck. So now we're going to actually get to the fun part, which is play the harp. Um, so what I'm going to do here is place a C chord and I'll do a C there because you have to see up top. So you can do all four fingers here. So I've got them all placed, they're all even, and the thumb of course is not because it's supposed to be up high, right? Now what I'm going to do is start with the thumb and I'm going to pluck it. Okay, so you noticed after I played the actual string, my thumb moved and did some kind of motion, okay? Why that motion? Because plucking the string is energy, okay? When you put pressure on the string, it turns into momentum, which means we need to do something with that momentum. We need to do something with that energy. And that is close. Or in this uh, instance, it's more of a flipping motion for the thumb. And it's gonna flip over the second knuckle. So that flipping motion helps our thumb to relax. It also helps the energy go somewhere. So we learned about the thumb flips over the second. And we do that motion for the reason of staying relaxed, following through with energy. Two, three, and four, if you notice, are coming from a totally opposite angle. The tips are pointing this way, whereas the thumb tips pointing that way. So the motion is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to play the second finger for you, and you'll see how it's different. Okay, you saw it flip, didn't flip over any knuckle, of course. It went straight into the palm. Three does the same. Keep your knuckles curved all the way to the tip so you have that nice, strong, articulated sound. And four. Okay, so after I plucked all four fingers, this is the shape I have. It's kind of like a fist, but it's not a gripped fist, okay? Because the whole reason for closing is to, number one, relax and also follow through with the energy. And a little bit more on that following through with energy, it's like a baseball batter. If you ever watched baseball, they have the bat, the ball comes at them, they hit the ball. When their bat comes in contact with the ball though, they don't stop, right? They did the ball, it would just go straight down. It wouldn't go out to the field. They follow through with the motion. So they complete the swing all the way around to finish off that energy. A little bit more about closing in that motion. It does take a little bit of time to get used to it and to figure out that balance. When I mean close, I said earlier, make a fist. Not a tight fist though. This is about relaxation. Pretend there's a butterfly in your palm, okay? And you don't want it to fly away. You're gonna cover your fingers over it very gently. So it's a very gentle, natural, relaxing motion to deal with that energy and to relax your hand. This is something good to practice when you're sitting in the car, waiting at your doctor's appointment, trying to relax, or at the harp too. So get your practice of this motion all the time. You don't need to be at the harp to practice this motion and to get comfortable with it. Fit it in when you can, and remember, pretend there's a butterfly. Relax, a full motion, no curling. Don't curl in like this. This is not gonna be relaxing. This is no tension. This is a very natural movement. So try it.